Hello YouTube! Today we are going to migrate our JavaScript application into TypeScript. But before we look into code, let me share with you the migration strategy I usually like to follow. And in order to follow that migration strategy, we need to create a dependency graph per screen or per entry point. And if we look into our last week's application, we have four entry points. And those are the entry points we had, so one per screen. Then we need to pick one of those entry points. Let's say we pick the first one and we will get all the childs from it recursively and create then the diagram of dependencies. So how does it look like? Let's say we have a page, which is the initial screen you have, and that page is built by a list and a list item. And then the list item is only using, for example, HTML tags or even a component from Material UI, for example. So in the point of view of your application, this is a leaf component. It doesn't call any other component from your application. So we have the dependency tree or the dependency graph from this screen. You can start the migration looking into list item, then you migrate list, and after that you migrate page. Why I don't advise you to start on page and go down to list item? Because if you start on page, then you are still consuming components that are not types, TypeScript or they don't have types yet. So that migration will be a bit painful for you. But if you start from list item and you go up, then every single level that you go up, you start to see the benefits of having types. But it's up to you, whichever uh, way you want to go, it's okay. Uh, for today, we are doing starting from list item and going up, okay? But let me just show you one more example. Let's say that we have on the left uh, one profile and on the right the vehicles of that same profile, okay? So that person. And imagine that we have a material UI table, we have some cars, uh, photos over there, then we have a form with formic, and this person is also inside the card, right? So what, what should we, we do in terms of the graph? So let's start by the screen or the root. And we have the user profile page itself. Then on the left, we have a person detail and on the right, another component called vehicle list. Those two components depend on a material card. And why is this material card green? Well, Material UI already provides definitions for you. So the d.ts files are already inside Material when you npm install it. So every single component that is already TypeScript compliant, we will ma mark it green. The next one is the photo. And the photo is from our application itself. So this component is not green yet. The next one is Formic, and luckily Formic already ships with d.ts files as well, so we are good to go on that one. The next one is Axios, and Axios, like Material and Formic, already ship with d.ts files, so we are okay on that one as well. The last one is Yoop, and sadly Yoop doesn't have any definition files for TypeScript, but we are in luck because there exists types already for yup in npm, so we can just npm install types slash yup, and that one becomes green immediately. The next one, we can start from vehicles list, and vehicles list, in order to load that table, will need axios as well, so there we have that dependency. The next one is the material table to show the list. Then we have vehicle list item, which refers the material table as well, and also the photo, because on the right of that table, we add the photos. Now we have the dependency tree or the dependency graph from this screen. It's completely here on the screen. And as I explained to you before, I will start from the leaves. So the first component I would start to migrate will be photo. After we migrate photo, we migrate person detail. Then we can't go up anymore because vehicles list is not migrated yet. So let's see what's the child, the deepest child of a vehicle list. And in this case is vehicle list item. So we migrate that one. Then we go up the tree, we migrate vehicle list. And after that, we can migrate the user profile itself. And after this, we have one screen of our application that is fully TypeScript. Then we can start to pick all the other screens of the application, do exactly the same uh, dependency graph, migrate them, and do that until we reach the end. 
So now we can go to VS Code and start to migrate our application from JavaScript to TypeScript, even though it will be much simpler than this one that I showed you right now. In order to follow our strategy, we will go to our leaf components and rename them from .js to .tsx. Then TypeScript will start to complain about some errors and we will fix them as we go. When the leaf components are migrated, we can start to go to the root level component. Okay, so our leaf component and the one we are going to start is homepage.js. We can come here and just say homepage.tsx tsx you will see that now typescript starts to complain because we don't have types yet we will install them in a second so let's close this one for now come to index.js and we can see that index.js is only exporting on page.tsx so we can just safely rename this one to tsx and the same to this one because it's only exporting the home page so Renaming those three files is the beginning of our journey. Now, if we try to run next, next will throw some errors because the types are not installed, the ones that I said before. And if you look the messages, quite good, the message from next. It says that we need to install those packages. So we can come here, copy, paste and install them. And while that one is installing, it's a good time for you to look into your dependency tree uh, where you see all the dependencies and check if any of those squares is yellow at the moment, which means that you need some typings. If you need those typings, it's now a good moment to go to npm or even to github.com slash definitely typed and check if you can find those uh, definitions. If not, probably you will have to make them yourself, but the chances of you not finding those uh, typings is quite small. So look around, go to Stack Overflow and you will find them, okay? So now that the, those are installed, we can run again. And this time, Next.js will create a tsconfig.json for us, as you can see here in the message, okay? And this tsconfig.json is quite good. Let's just kill the server for now. It's quite good. It has a lot of good... Uh, defaults for us. The only one that I will change is this strict from false to true. Okay. And changing that one behind the scenes, we enabled a lot of other flags. One of them is no implicit any. Okay. But you can go to the TypeScript website and check how many other flags this enables. It's a lot of them. Okay. So TypeScript will yell at you a lot of the times, <laughs> but it's something that we want when we migrate to TypeScript, right? So now that our simple components are migrated, you can even see that now this age one is typed. TypeScript knows what it is. And so VS Code is showing you this nice pop-up explaining what that is. The next component we need to migrate or we should migrate is this list.js. And this list.js, we can start by renaming it to list.tsx. And we can also remove these comments we left from the previous lesson that we don't need anymore. Okay. Now that we remove those, you can see immediately that after we rename the file from JS to TSX, that TypeScript starts to complain a lot and VS Code shows the errors for us. And even here at the bottom, you can see that this method dot JSON from our fetch is returning a promise of any. So it will be good first to type that one before we do anything else. So let's call it vehicle person, for example. Okay. And if you remember from last week, we have vehicle, owner name and details. So let's create an interface with those details, which is a string. The owner name is also a string. Okay. And we have the vehicle type vehicle, which is also a string. Now that we have that one, we can come here and say that we will receive a vehicle uh, array or undefined. Okay. Because our server can just return undefined, which is perfectly fine if they do. Okay. And we can now see over and over here that our get initial props is returning an owner's list that can be a vehicle person array or undefined. So this is starting to get some types to us, right? Let's go at the top. And in order to 
make this bit typed, usually the convention is to create an interface and call this interface the name of your component. In this case, we will call it list and we add props, okay? Props from properties. And the, the funny thing here is when I do this and I call it vehicle, not call, when I uh, make this of type vehicle person and pass it here, list props, okay? Now look at what happens when I have owners list, okay? It immediately knows that it's that type. So if I do this, okay, I can immediately say details, owner name and vehicle. If for some reason I mistype vehicle and I type it like that, TypeScript will immediately correct me saying, well, that property doesn't exist, Bruno, so fix it, something's wrong. And this is really powerful when your team starts to grow and you start to have more and more developers. It's really, really powerful and helpful to everybody. It even works as kind of documentation for everybody, okay? So this one can be undefined, so we just put that one. And this component, after we format, looks fine, looks like we migrated this one successfully. Let's just run to make sure that everything was still working or is still working, okay? Let's open our browser. And if everything went fine and we do slash, oops, localhost 3000 slash list, okay? Let's just wait for the previous page to load. And that one, let's just put list and it should be compiling so yeah, let's just give it a, a bit and we will go back at it in a second. So this list is still working. Everything looks like it's still working. The previous page is still working and the home page is also working. So the only page that we need to migrate now is our details page, which is for example, slash airplane slash Bill Gates. And this page, even though it will work, it's still done in normal JavaScript. So let's just go here and rename this person.js to person.tsx, okay? And renaming that probably next will even fail, so let's just kill it. Um, we can adopt exactly the same thing we did before. And if you remember, we are using exactly the same interface for data, so we can even go here create a new folder called, for example, API. Oops, I already had that folder over here. New file and call it vehicle person.ts. Okay. And now we export this one. We can import it in the list. Okay. And going to our person.tsx, we can do exactly what we did before. So interface and now person, which is the name of our component plus props. Okay, and we have owner list of vehicle person, which is an array or undefined. If you don't want to type this or undefined all the time, okay, you can just put this question mark over here and it's exactly the same thing, okay? <laughs> so I'm sometimes putting slash undefined, other times I use the question mark, so but they are exactly the same thing, okay? So over here, we just need to pass person props, okay? and doesn't exist on person props. Why? Ah, okay. Another good thing about TypeScript. We are calling it owner's list and here we only have owner list. So it's in reality owner's list. And now the warning disappears, which is quite good. So if you see here, even our owners now, it has a proper type. It has a type of vehicle person array or undefined. Okay. And it's coming from this question mark. So as you can see, it's propagating well. So the propagation is correct. So let's just copy this one and we will do the same thing in this JSON. Okay. So let's do or undefined. And because we are doing this over here and on get initial props, we can do exactly the same thing over here. So we do two in one. <laughs> So now the next error from this component is telling us that, oh, this object can be undefined. And it's actually true. This object can be undefined. So we found a bug just by using TypeScript on itself. The same for this one. So it can be undefined that array. And okay, so we fix it. 
And so, as you can see, we are already solving a lot of bugs just because we are using TypeScript, right? The next uh, problem that we can fix is this context. And this context comes from next pages or page, page context, okay? And if you see here, now we can even see everything that exists inside that context, something that before, if you remember, I had to open the next documentation in order to see. So just not having to open the next documentation and search for what I want and having it immediately here in VS Code, you can imagine that is a big productivity boost for you and for the colleagues in your team. So on top of that, I don't even know what I did this last week because this bit here can be simplified to query over here, here directly, directly, right? And the same for this rec. So we can just do this and remove this line, okay? Oops. And it's much cleaner now, I would say. <laughs> so now that we did this bit, we can even do something a bit bigger. Because if you see when we are using query, okay? Imagine we are using query and we don't have any helpers. We can type whatever we want and TypeScript has no way to validate that because the object inside our next context page, okay, oops, why did I open that? Our uh, context over here, if we go to query, okay, is a parsed URL query. And the parsed URL query is nothing more, nothing less than whatever key you provide, we will always type it as string or an array of strings. And that's not actually what we want for this specific one. So we can create an interface for this specific one and call it interface. Uh, I'm really bad with naming, so I will call it my next page context, okay? Uh, extends next page context, okay? Next page context. And we will override the query by itself. And in the query, we can have person, which is just a string, and we will have vehicle, which is also just a string, okay? And doing that, nothing will happen yet because I'm not using that one, but when I just paste this one, you will see that immediately TypeScript knows that, well, that property doesn't exist at all, Bruno. So you did something wrong, Bruno. Fix it, please. <laughs> and yes, we can fix it. And on top of that, you can see that now we have autocomplete or IntelliSense or whatever you want to call it to this query. So we know that query only receives person and vehicle now. And in our case, it was person. Yes, it was person. And this component is also fully migrated to TypeScript at the moment. OK, now let's run the application and see if our newly migrated component is also working like the previous two. Um, or the previous three, sorry, uh, that we created. And so, ooh, I opened so many pages, Bruno, so many clicks. <laughs> so when that one uh, loads, and it will take probably a few seconds for it to load, we should see the list uh, of um, vehicles and uh, people. And clicking in one of those, we should navigate to the next page and everything should be just there, right? So I will just fast forward this for you. Ooh. Okay, we got an error. So what happened? Okay, so, ah, okay, reloading worked. Um, so now that, that we got that one, we can click in, for example, John Doe's bike. And clicking in John Doe's bike, we will see that we now received that. We can go back, click in any other person, for example, Elon Musk, we see the loading, and then we get the detail, like, we had last week. The only difference is that now everything is typed, okay? And that's really powerful for you and for your team's productivity. So I hope that much more than this code by itself, but the initial part about the strategy will help you migrate whatever application you have in JavaScript to TypeScript. So if you have a different a strategy that you usually follow and gives you good results, leave in the comments and I will learn something with you and we can have a nice discussion. So next week we will have API routes. So I hope to have you over there. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and see you next week. Bye bye.